the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Things, these truths that are coming forth from His Word, and then number two, that God will grant us the grace to be practitioners of the same. I guarantee you that if you listen and you pay attention to the things that every speaker who came here shared with you, and then that which you are about to hear now within this brief session, it will be impossible for your life to remain the same. Please shout a loud Amen. amen. Lamentations chapter 10 and verse 27. We'll start with that scripture tonight. Lamentations chapter 10 and verse 27. Let me turn to it myself. Lamentations 10, 27. 3, 27 I meant to say. Lamentations 3 27. I wish it was projected, but then you can read it from your Bible or whatever device you have. Okay, I have it here. It says, It is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth. It is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth. The Bible tells us that there is an advantage to bear your yoke means to begin the journey early to pay the price early when I saw the theme of your conference I was really very touched that a people can be that discerning to be serious about life and destiny one last scripture and I begin to teach Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1 it says to remember now your creator remember now thy creator it says in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in it remember now your creator in the days of your youth i want to challenge us tonight everyone who is here i believe you came by the inspiration of the spirit my charge tonight is to help us to be able to find purpose and to find meaning to life our world is full of purposeless people our world is full of angry people the rate of suicide continues to increase in our world even among young people because they do not find any reason or any motivation for living the rate at which people take their lives live very irresponsible lives tell that there is something about purpose there is something about destiny that they do not understand are we still together we look at our world and even our nation right now and there is a very disturbing escalation of violence terrorism and every one of these violent individuals who kill people burn homes destroy the peace and the sanctity of a territory every one of them was once a baby in the hand of a woman what suddenly transforms a baby into an evil man what suddenly transforms a vibrant baby with a glorious potential and a glorious destiny 
to become one who would cause mayhem and destruction to society now tonight very quickly there are five questions i'm going to be asking you these five questions are the questions that every man who must make a meaningful life and a meaningful destiny must be able to ask and to answer failure to understand the question and failure to answer this question would equal a life of frustration a life of defeat but happy is the man who is able to understand and answer these five questions if you can understand these questions and answer them you can be guaranteed that you are on your way to living a life of purpose a life of meaning and a life of high level impact can i tell you this i guarantee you that everyone on earth is seeking answers to these five questions the angry man who uses violence to communicate his aggression the young person who is frustrated over the issue of a job the student who is seeking admission the one who is trying to graduate the graduate who is looking for a job the married man in search of children the politician in search of a position everyone born of a woman is living for these five questions this is why you live this is why you breathe in fact it is a search for these five questions that brought you to be seated here right now tonight unfortunately most people spend their lives and their days and they are never able to ask and answer these five questions some may answer a few of the questions and have some measure of success and advancement but the lord himself is going to be asking us these questions tonight and my assignment is to ask you and also guide you to find answers can we do that within the few minutes we have pray a prayer whilst you are seated open my eyes oh god these are questions that pertain unto your destiny listen if you do not answer this question your children will pay for it you do not answer this question you may live a frustrated life happy is a man who is able to ask and answer these questions five questions that pertain to destiny that pertain to purpose in the name of jesus christ are you ready question number one the first question that anyone who intends to live an effective life just a little on the volume just anyone who intends to live a life of meaning and a life of purpose must ask question one who am i this is a very simple but powerful question who am i this is a question that seeks to help you understand your identity there is such a phenomenon in our world today called identity crisis that if you do not know who you are life social media the sociological context will try to define for you a template about who you are that may not have been in your original script as designed by God who am I let's look at a few scriptures Psalm 49 and verse 20 please help us media let's work together so we can work with time Psalm 49 and verse 20 The Bible says man that is in honor and understandeth not is like a beast that perisheth. One version says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. That means if you do not know who you are, 
it is possible to live far below God's expectation for you simply because there is a problem with your identity in Matthew chapter 16 Matthew chapter 16 I'll begin my reading from verse 13 Jesus Christ was with the disciples and then he asked them a question when he came to Caesarea Philippi he asked a question saying who do men say that I the son of man am it was a question of identity they had worked with Jesus for a few years at this time and yet they did not know who he was next verse please verse 14 they said some say that you are John the Baptist some say that you are Elias some say that you are Jeremiah and some say you are one of the prophets and then he asked them he said now the question is to you who do you say that I am and he was shocked that although they were close to him eating together helping out in his crusades they didn't know who he was it was only Peter who spoke and said I know who thou art thou art Christ the son of the living God it took the disciples a long time to really know and understand who Jesus was in his earth work the question I have for you is who are you do you just believe that you are a biological accident that just appeared as a union between a father and a mother to produce you you are just an entity that makes up the space of the 7.6 billion people on earth many roaming aimlessly through life do you believe you are just a figure in Nigeria census in Africa census who am I is a question every champion must answer when you know who you are you will know who you are not let me give you two scriptures that reveal to you who you are first John chapter 3 and verse 1 powerful scripture first John 3 and verse 1 behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god it says therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in calling us sons of god do you know what it means to be a son of god it means one who came from God it means one who is like God in every sense of the word you look at the creation of man in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 the Bible says and God said let us make man we're answering the first question let us make that man in our image the image of God means his spiritual quality man everyone including you was made in the image that spiritual quality of god and then man was made in his likeness his likeness means his functionality to have two hands one head two legs and so on and so forth so man this man that is so confused moving around wondering what his destiny is about the bible says that man was made in the image and the likeness of god I'm no longer slave to fear I am a child of God That I'm no longer slave to fear I am a child Listen, can I tell you this? Please look up many of us came from backgrounds where growing up they call you several names to the point that you do not even know who and what you are they named you after your result they named you after your failure they named you after any maybe any health challenge you may have 
many times in the bible you find out that people were named after their condition a man sat at the gate of jericho at the passage of jericho and the bible calls him blind batimio that's not a name batimio means the son of timio the blind man who is the son of timio what a description and you see we live through all these different names that they call us some call you stupid some call you foolish some call you a cursed child because of the region you came from and when it's now time for you to manifest destiny all these names start clamoring around your head and you are unable to move forward but you must answer that question tonight i have heard what my father said i am i've heard what my mother said i am i've heard what my school said i am i've heard what social media said i am god of heaven who am i it's a question you must ask tonight and you must answer i'm giving you help in answering that question i may not be a billionaire's child you may say i may not be a professor's child you may say I may not come from a privileged family but I am a child of God it's a very powerful statement if there is nothing in your life that you think is worth celebrating find rest in this description of your identity I am a child of God Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16 let me tell you what else you are according to scripture matthew 5 from verse 13 the bible says ye are the salt of the earth please shout it after me say i am the salt of the earth one more time say i am the salt of the earth now look up please the assignment of salt salt has two basic assignments number one for preservation number two to add value or taste so when god says through his word that you are salt it means i cannot be a disadvantage to my world you are the salt of the earth a system of preservation and a system of value when you have this identity you don't walk around trying to look for groups to endorse you you don't try to look for friends and association to give you an accreditation god already called you an advantage the bible says and everything adam called it that was the name thereof it's up to you to agree with god and say i am truly salt and you know something about salt women many of you are involved in cooking there are times that if you miss some ingredients the food is is already you can't you can't are we together now you have to cut some ingredients at a certain time it is never too late to add salt to food no even if it's even if you make a mistake and you cook and the salt is not there even on the table you can still add the salt and you will not know whether you added it before or after the effect will still be the same say i am the salt of the earth let no one bully you that you came too late no salt is never too late i am the salt of the earth i bring preservation and i bring value the bible says ye are the light of the world give us verse yes thank you you are the light of the world verse 14 now you know what it means to be light light talks of solution light talks of the absence of darkness and confusion and chaos so in addition to being solved he says to you that i am light someone prophesy say i am light a light to my family a light in ministry a light in business a light in destiny the definition of darkness is my world without me i am light and the bible says john 1 5 that the light shineth in darkness 
and the darkness comprehended it not let me tell you this lack of understanding identity is why we have occult groups today because these occult groups create a narrative if you join us they say you are powerful there are many useless groups online offline many groups that are antichrist in context but the pressure to become what god already says you are has pushed people to mortgage their destinies i'm walking in power walking in miracles i live a life of favor because i know who i am walking in power walking in miracles i live a life of favor please hear me i don't care what circumstance led to your birth prepared or not i don't care the the context i don't care how bad your past had been i don't care what the situation is let god be true and every man a liar if he calls you a blessing you are a blessing if he calls you salt you are salt if he calls you light you are light prophesy to yourself in one minute that in the name of jesus i reject from my life everything god did not say i am that relationship is trying to prove to me like i am a non-entity my lecturers respectfully may have called me names that should not be maybe my parents called me names that should not be they call you the black sheep in the family they call you a useless person answer that question tonight i am greatness on my way to happen i am the light the light i am salt i am a child of god a co-heir with god and a joint heir with christ seated with christ in heavenly places far above principalities far above powers in the name of jesus please be seated the first question tonight is who am i i found this question and it gave me rest in my life I took time to study who I was and who I am and more importantly who I was and I am in Christ it gave me rest no pressure to prove any point no pressure to try to live to no 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 I don't define myself just by what I wear I don't define myself just by what I eat I don't define myself just by what I enter in terms of a vehicle or the house that I live in. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. It's just for me just for me Jesus came and paid it just for me just for me just for me listen you know the value of a thing by what is used to purchase it when you go to the market to buy things they are in, usually in grades maybe bags or food stuff they will tell you this one is thirty thousand this one is fifty thousand women they can bring out one jewelry and say this one is fifty thousand then they bring out something that looks like what you can swallow and tell you this is himself to become a baby walked upon the earth for 30 years and died raised you up with him and some individual looks at you and says you are a failure simply because of your cgpa looks at you and says you are a failure simply because you did not come from a background that gave you some privilege can i tell you 
settle that question tonight I may not have all the things that men clamor for for now but I settle in this fact that I'm a child of God I am one with him and I am a wonder on my way to happen in the name of Jesus Christ question two what is the second question you must ask if you want to live a life of purpose a life of meaning where am I from a very simple but powerful question where am I from where am I coming from the first question seeks to solve the issue of identity crisis the second question seeks to solve the issue of your source and your connection it's important for you to know you did not just evolve from a fish to a man with all due respect to science it took the creativity of the God of heaven he brought you right from where he was he did not just spit you out of thin air you are not just a product of a chemical reaction somewhere where am i from joshua chapter 24 from verse 14 and 15 when you know where you are from you will know how you need to be connected listen please look up fish came out of water and it must be connected to water the birds must be connected to the air and the trees for their survival when you know where you came from and who you came out from you will know that you need him not just as a matter of tea and bread but a matter of life not knowing where you came from is why a lot of people have not handed everything over to jesus and to serve the living god joshua 24 14 and 15. now therefore fear the lord he said and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood please continue give it to us and in egypt and serve the lord verse 15 now and if it seem evil unto you to serve the lord he said choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your of your father or the gods that were whatever it is all of those gods that are on the other side the gods of the amorite but as for me and my house because i know where i come from it's a choice that i've made i will serve the lord i need him as a matter of life and death the question where you are coming from will immediately put you in a position where you are not ashamed to be connected to source are we together there are many people today who act as if there is no god in heaven there are many people who act today as if they just appeared and evolved out of space knowing that man came from god means that man must depend on god and be connected to him to prosper is that true there is a saying that a river that forgets its source that river will dry up a destiny and a life that forgets its source will dry up the second question that god is asking you tonight and beckoning that you must answer is the question of your source your origin and your connection John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 very quickly let's hurry up John chapter 1 6 and 7 the Bible says there was a man help me read that scripture if you can see it one to read there was a man stop 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 there was a man sent from where not sent from Zechariah not sent from Elizabeth not sent from Abel Kuta or Lagos 
or Borno state or Imo state no there was a man sent from God when he arrived the earth they gave him a name and they named him John but the Bible says the man was sent from God question where are you from if you ever believe you are just a product of your father and your mother the frame that gave your spirit its habitation on earth may have come from your geography but believe me when I tell you you are sent from God that means you have to be connected to God to find fulfillment you can replace God with any and every other thing it will not give you fulfillment the Bible says God has put eternity in the heart of man it's a realm that only his size can occupy no matter what you do nothing else will ever fill that space is someone learning can I tell you when we make altar calls it is not just because we are saving people from going to hell this is more than an issue of hellfire you are bringing people to be connected to their source watch this this beautiful fan here is blowing and giving me cool air while I preach you disconnect this from the source you don't need to do anything to the fan it will stand here looking useless no matter what else you touch here the value that you get here is derived from the connection there this is very powerful our world today makes it archaic to be spiritual vocally spiritual and declare your connection to God we live in a world today where the more you seem to practice secular humanism and ignore the reality of the God in heaven the more you seem to be approved by the status quo of society I bring you a message tonight can I tell you every one of you seated looking at me you need God in your life not just as a system of escape from hellfire alone he defines the value of your life you are everything Lord you are everything you are everything listen I love the psalmist the psalmist loved God so much you would see him describe his value the value of God in his life where can I hide from your presence he says as the deer pants after the water brooks he says so my soul longs for you Psalm 63 says oh God you are my God he says early will I seek you my soul thirsts for you as in a dry and a weary land where no water is he said to see your power and your glory even as I have seen in the sanctuary let me encourage you my dear people never find it a thing of shame to declare your honor and your allegiance from the to the government and the God of heaven that is your source even if you are in the midst of people and your ringtone it rings and it's a song that honors God don't be too quick to offer it because you think it will bring shame for you no You must be vocally and unashamed about your love and your, your acknowledgement of the God of heaven over your life. Let me tell you what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Verse 6, it says, in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledge your source acknowledge your source I acknowledge him always and forever 
no matter what he does in and through my life when men clap for you make sure you let them know that I am what I am today because I am connected to he that is was and is forever and can I tell you if God be for you if that God that you have so acknowledged be for you standing beside you like a mighty terrible one there is nothing that anyone can do against you if you're with me say amen, amen. question number three why am I here the first question is who am I a question of your identity number two where am I from your source and your connection and your allegiance question number three now why am I here this is a question of purpose and destiny why am I here Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 let's hurry up so we can pray Hebrews 10 and verse 7 very powerful scripture then said I lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O God so I have come according to the script of a book that is written I'm not just one who is moving around and hoping to find something to do with my life there is already a script about my life my assignment is to find it and walk in keeping with it John chapter 4 and verse 34 hear what Jesus said after his discourse with the woman at the well when the disciples came and met him here's what Jesus told them my meat that is my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it you can start and not finish to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it please look up my dearly revered mentor whom i honor even in his death dr miles munro one of the things that he taught me and taught the body of christ is that the wealthiest place on earth today is not the gold mines in congo and parts of africa is not the oil wells in the middle east that the wealthiest place on earth today he called it the cemetery where people died with visions that never came to pass books that were not written facilities that were never built men and women who were destined to make maximum impact in their generation some of them went as armed robbers and died in shame some of them died cheaply because the devil wasted and ended their life can i tell you this if you want to live a meaningful life you call this conference being intentional you must answer that question why am i here John chapter 1 where we read earlier verse 7 tells us why John came and this represents the universal mandate of every believer he says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him his witness might believe whether this will happen through ministry whether this will happen through business and entrepreneurship whether this will happen through leadership whether this will happen through politics and governance whether this will happen by being an academician it does not matter the geography of the witness the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through his witness might believe the first serious book I remember reading of course aside from all of the manuals and the rest that 
you would get um, handbooks you know in the seminary and all of that the first serious book that I remember intentionally reading reading for the purpose of my destiny is discovering your purpose there had been many other books devotionals and other books that I remember reading but I didn't pay attention to them for many of them I just read them for reading sake in all honesty just to fill that void of spirituality but the first book I remember sitting down with a notebook side by side and saying I want to change my life things cannot be like this when I found that book I was already making some level of impact but I wanted to be intentional about my life and it changed my life forever listen to me if you cannot tell me why you are on earth in one sentence you do not know why you are here as simple as this looks you will be surprised that there are so many people who do not know why they are here most people allow society to define their relevance part time and per season so a student now soon you'll be a graduate or you're already a graduate then the next thing in your agenda becomes to get a job then raise a family then raise children then try to manage some kind of sicknesses that come from depression and middle age then you die it's not a wise way to live you can live with intention ah. dependable dependable god it doesn't matter what comes my way you are still god this is the part of the song i love intentional intentional god everything is working out for my good. hear me he's intentional about making everything work out for you according to jeremiah 29 and verse 11 that i know the thoughts that i think towards you say the lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end you must be intentional about discovering why you are here some of you after this conference you need to go to a bookstore and go and get materials that help to define your purpose for existence question four very quickly what can i do oh powerful this is a question that seeks to help you understand your abilities your giftings and your potentials question one who am i question two where am i from question three why am i here question four what can i do let me tell you what you can do philippians 4 13. philippians 4 and verse 13. everyone read it loud and clear if you can see it. ready one to read i can do all things through christ which strengthened me Acts chapter 13 and verse 6. What can I do? I can't be a non entity here. This is identifying your giftings, identifying your potentials. Dr. Miles Munro would define potentials as your inherent abilities, abilities that are locked up within you. You don't have to create or invent them, you only develop and deploy them. Acts 13 6 did I get that right please look for it for me and David after he served his generation that's what I'm looking for he slept with his fathers 
after he served his generation once you're doing that let's go huh? 13 36 i missed one figure here please give us 13 36 same acts 13 thank you that's the scripture i'm looking for read with me please one to go for david after he had served his own generation by the will of god fell on sleep hold on that means you are not permitted to go until you bring that which is locked up within you and you serve your generation with it discovering your place in life is important but discovering the tools now please look up if i wear a lab coat and you see me hang a stethoscope on my neck you would most likely call me a doctor is that true if you see me wear an engineering helmet and holding a tape or holding something around you will call me an engineer if you see me with a t-square and a drawing board or some laptop using autocad you most likely say i'm an architect or a builder your abilities are pointers to your potential you can know where you are going by what tools you were given you can't call somebody with a hammer and a nail a doctor he most likely may be a carpenter what can i do what do i have in exodus chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 then we jump to verse 17 please write it and, and watch this carefully exodus chapter 4 the lord appeared to moses and the bible says and moses answered and said behold they will not believe me i have found where i'm to go i know my assignment my assignment is to be a deliverer but what tools will i use please keep that scripture there it's not enough to find your assignment you must know the tools that will make for your efficiency the bible says they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the lord had not appeared unto thee next verse verse 2 and the lord said unto him please read with me everybody want to read and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod god will never send you until he put something in your hand that rod for someone that rod is your ability to sing for someone that rod is supernatural intelligence for someone that rod is leadership acumen for someone that rod is physical strength for someone that rod is the ability to be so trusted that that integrity and dependability it's time for you to take that rod he's put in your hand because the king's word and the king's duty and the king's business requires haste go to verse 17 of exodus chapter 4 it says and thou shalt take this rod in your hand wherewith shalt thou do signs as you are going to fulfill purpose your potential that will be what you will use to be a blessing to people can i tell you this please look up i remember many many years ago getting a sheet of paper and writing a list of my potentials when i found out what i'm teaching you now i had just in fact I, i'm not even sure i'd started ministry i wrote it down i remember i still have the book old book but it's there let me tell you the things I wrote. I wrote singing. I wrote creativity. I wrote counseling. I wrote the ability to teach. All of those things. There is none of them that is not in use in my life today. Can I tell you this? Everything that you will use to serve the purposes of God is already within you. Everything David had became the weapon if it was 
if it was the, the courage of a warrior and the ability to sling, he used it to kill Goliath. If it was music, he used it to drive a spirit out of Saul. Can I tell you, don't waste anything God gave you. Let me give you an assignment. Write out this night. Make it an assignment. Everything you know that constitutes an advantage in your life, write it. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.